Hi, welcome to the Lux channel. So I see this issue uh, quite often uh, whenever I see uh, people uh, uh, do some kind of uh, TCP uh, performance analysis. Uh, they do plot these graphs and then they analyze and I have also seen uh, various uh, white papers uh, from uh, 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 universities and university students and uh, people who also do uh, PhD and stuff like that. So the big issue I see uh, quite uh, redundant in all this uh, uh, performance charts is that uh, they try to kind of evaluate a specific, uh, uh, I mean most cases uh, they try to evaluate a specific uh, uh, TCP congestion strategy and then uh, uh, they do plot uh, the same on a graph and they effectively get some kind of a sort with the pattern. So this is indeed I was discussing uh, uh, yesterday with one of my student. So I often uh, see the issue that uh, they always uh, take a specific TCP session and then they try to plot uh, 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 the performance uh, characteristics uh, in the form of a graph and then they analyze and then they compare uh, uh, a specific uh, TCP congestion uh, control uh, strategy with uh, some other uh, technique or algorithm. So the issue is in the real world you don't have really one single uh, TCP session always whenever you open a uh, simple uh, website you may have tens or hundreds of uh, TCP connections uh, behind the scenes for every resource it has that reference uh, it is uh, needed uh, to have multiple TCP sessions so you should always take in a factor that uh, combined effect is what it is going to happen in a specific given uh, network uh, you know, uh, channel or uh, the bandwidth of that uh, specific, uh, you know, WAN network or whatever is that, you know, remote, uh, you know, TCP session is connected to. So, if you generally Google uh, uh, TCP congestion, uh, TCP congestion, something like this, you can see various images. So, they kind of plot these things. And also, uh, you can uh, 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 go through some uh, uh, white papers uh, of you know specific universities. Even let me just Google uh, TCP congestion uh, PDF. You know, some kind of white papers. So let's just take an example. So let us see if this contains a graph. So you can see here, I just picked something very random. Uh, uh, this is somewhat like this. It looks interesting, but more than this, uh, you may find some uh, specific documents which looks like a patent uh, docs and uh, it may have some specifications that uh, so and so is the uh, current uh, TCP performance curve and then uh, we have done some changes here and there in the Linux kernel or something like that and then with that new changes in TCP congestion control algorithm or else we have done our own congestion control algorithm and with that we have these kind of uh, characteristics and stuff like that they generally discuss. The problem with the same is uh, you should always understand as I said earlier whenever you open a uh, page let's take for example Wireshark and let me capture some packets so let us go to a simple website like this because this is not even an HTTPS or SSL uh, uh, enabled website it is just a plain old HTTP website I don't much like this uh, uh, encrypted uh, you know websites although uh, I really don't understand why Google so much pushes uh, as a part of its SEO and stuff like that you don't need you know SSL on every website <laughs> so especially a website like mine in, even in that case if someone hacks I can just re-upload all these resources and uh, it doesn't have any kind of user login it doesn't I do uh, have nothing like online uh, e-commerce stuff and stuff like that so it's a very simple plain um, uh, HTTP based website so let's open some page randomly let's open say for example this videos and then uh, we can go here so you can see here the moment I open the same let me just stop capturing the packets the moment I open the same you can see here there are literally hundreds of you know TCP sessions uh, connecting to various uh, stuff or resources whichever it is required so if you go back to my website and if you tell a view source you can see here it has so many uh, resources it needs some files uh, here you can see here it needs this 
jpeg files and stuff like that to pull all these resources so it need to form multiple tcp sessions so even in a case like if the files are in the cache even then you need <laughs> all this tcp session so that uh, it has to check with the remote web server and then it has to pull the you know required resource so coming back to the context uh, this is what exactly it happens uh, as you can see here it uh, it forms uh, so many uh, you know tcp sessions it's just not one tcp session and then you test some performance curve it is completely a bullshit asset so if you go back here uh, if you see any of these graphs you can find such graphs quite often and then uh, they also discuss uh, you know various uh, tcp uh, algorithms and based on each algorithm what could be its uh, performance curve and stuff like that so it doesn't really uh, justify the same because uh, if the bandwidth is momentarily is not utilized say for example this tcp session is underperforming by the time some other uh, tcp session is going to catch up and it is going to have a sort of you know overlap let me just do a quick picture so that you can understand uh, this scenario so this is like uh, ms paint in uh, linux so let's assume we have some kind of a threshold let's assume this is the upper threshold and below it's it's uh, lower threshold so if you kind of plot that sawtooth graph you may get uh, some kind of a characteristics like this something like this and then it is going to drop down and again it is going to go up and it is going to drop down and it is going to repeat the same so during this time if you have multiple tcp sessions like i showed in the wire shark essentially what is going to happen is you may have some kind of an overlapping pattern so it will uh, be like this and then uh, any time if the link is underutilized the other uh, tcp session is going to catch up and effectively whatever the bandwidth you are getting is the net effect of uh, the entire uh, amalgamation of this channel utilization so this is what it happens and again if you have another uh, connection you may have some other uh, you know uh, overlapped you know resource curve like this resource usage curve like this so essentially it matters is uh, uh, you have a, a network and uh, you need to check that what is the total time it takes to kind of fetch the resources if it is multiple resources and if it is a question of single file download i don't think so it is just uh, going to justify any sort of proper test because uh, if you test any specific uh, you know uh, uh, network characteristics and uh, the tcp uh, behavior with respect to that network characteristics you need to test somewhat like this because this is what uh, the real world usage is all about and this is how the real world usage looks like so this is uh, uh, similar to the way you uh, uh, visualize the cpu utilization as well in a system so let's ex uh, take for example uh the system monitor uh, since uh, my system have uh, six core uh, cpu or else uh, 12 uh, cpu threads uh, with hyper threading enabled you can see here uh, each time a specific uh, processor core is getting utilized more and uh, by that time the other cores are going down so if i open any new applications uh, say for example let's open this chrome and couple of new applications as and when i do the same you can see suddenly there will be some kind of a, a spike in couple of cpus so yeah so the chrome is opening so you can see here there is a sudden uh, spike in the same and then it is you know momentarily the performance characteristics of cpu usage is been has been changed so similarly if i open more than uh, uh, you know five or six applications at any given point of time you can see uh, gradually there will be some uh, resource utilization increase in resource utilization so this is what exactly even happens in uh, uh, network uh, channel uh, bandwidth utilization as well it is not something that you take an account like these you know graphs individual graphs and then you try testing that uh, you know characteristics of a given network so let's again go back here so you can see here i'm uh, opening this uh, opera browser 
so you can see here based on that you can see uh, there is a sort of you know difference in resource utilization of this uh, cpu cores so this is what it is so similarly this is what exactly happens so that's why i kind of mentioned in this diagram in the real world this is what somewhat going to happen so net bandwidth utilization is what is more important rather than a single tcp connection and then uh, you just plot some useless graph and then you know trying to assess uh, what could be the performance characteristics of that uh, specific uh, tcp congestion algorithm so i once shot a uh, uh, series of videos on uh, Uh, kernel uh, tcp congestion algorithms in that i kind of mentioned the various uh, you know uh, congestion algorithms uh, uh, implemented in the linux kernel and uh, based on each specific use case a specific congestion control uh, algorithm is used some are uh, meant for uh, high uh, throughput uh, channel links some are meant for uh, 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 high latency links like uh, satellite networks or some kind of wireless remote wireless networks and stuff like that so this is true but on the other hand if you test the real network characteristics uh, always test with multiple tcp sessions uh, and even i suggest to test with some you know uh, uh, some amount of udp packets as well and then see how the tcp performs in such a given uh, network channel so this is what often i do in my uh, toffee uh, uh, project tests as well i never test a single tcp session and then judge the performance of that uh, you know wan optimized uh, uh, channel i always do uh, <laughs> tests with multiple sessions always i open uh, multiple websites simultaneously so that you have so many connections uh, to and fro happening between uh, uh, you know the website and the resources uh, whichever it is been associated and then i kind of uh, take into an account that how it performs in this kind of a scenario not just uh, a single uh, tcp session and then uh, try to uh, derive some kind of a conclusion based on the same so to conclude the same always uh, whenever you do this uh, tcp tcp performance and tcp characteristics uh, uh, tests always keep these things into your uh, you know um, checklist uh, do tests with uh, one tcp session and then plot the graphs do tests with immediately with uh, you know couple of tcp sessions and then followed by which uh, three sessions four sessions and so on and also make sure you have some kind of offset so that it is not all the time you know all these sessions have been uh, invoked at the same time all have been uh, uh, you know going up and going down at the same time uh, because this again doesn't represent a real world situation uh, please make sure that you have that you know some kind of randomization involved so that you can see that how the link is utilized with these multiple uh, tcp sessions so make sure uh, you do somewhat like this so let me do an undo so make sure you don't do somewhat like this you know so that you know all are in sync like this let's assume you have three tcp sessions somewhat all of them are in sync and uh, at a time they are either under utilizing the channel or else at a time they are choking that channel so please make sure it, this is something doesn't uh, in, happen and uh, try to do somewhat like i discussed earlier so that each time try to do so that you know it is out of sync and this way you get a better uh, you know bandwidth utilization curve so if you kind of understand the same you can see here <coughs> more often the bandwidth is utilized so you if you kind of let me just you know mark the same if you kind of you know highlight the same you can see here more often the bandwidth is utilized uh, unlike a situation like this if all of them are in sync me let me just redraw so if all of them are in sync uh, the problem is there is a sort of you know starvation over here you can see here there is a sort of starvation at each instance at the same time there is a sort of you know congestion happening over here so instead make sure that all of these are out of sync this is what exactly happens in a real world situation and try to emulate a real world use case not just one tcp uh, uh, you know connection between two ends and then try to arrive some kind of you know performance uh, curve and then try to decide this is what is going to be an ideal uh, you know tcp optimization uh, uh, 
or tcp uh, you know uh, tune up you have to do for that specific uh, network and those who are just uh, started uh, uh, learning about networking and as well as linux and kernel and other stuff uh, of, of course you can find uh, these things in uh, uh, exposed as a proc variable so you can go to cd proc sys net so here you can find uh, in the core folder you can find a certain uh, uh, read memory write memory and a certain uh, buffer specific uh, uh, variables you can configure here you can also read what is the value it has been set uh, uh, via the proc interface and it will be uh, sent to the kernel and if you read it will be uh, pulled out of kernel and will be showed over here so let me just do a cat rmem default so you can see here the rmem default or the readmem default having the so and so value and uh, similarly if you want to check ipv4 uh, you know specific uh, ipv4 stack specific uh, control variables you can find it in the folder uh, net courses uh, sysnet uh, ipv4 folder proxys net ipv4 folder so this is what it is and you can find here uh, some are meant for tcp some are meant for udp and uh, stuff like that so as an example let's just do a cat uh, tcp congestion control you can see here uh, the default algorithm which is set as uh, uh, cubic and then cat tcp write memory so it has this you know uh, values set for the write memory it will generally have some kind of higher threshold medium and then lower threshold and stuff like that. so i don't want to much discuss about uh, 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 things about the proc variables in this uh, as a part of this video discussion so that's why i'm just kind of ignoring the same in case if you are very curious of course you can google about the same and you can read about this uh, values uh, in the internet you can just select and then google proc and you can find a lot of documentation uh, about the same as you can see here so with this i would like to wrap this episode hope you guys loved watching this video so if you have any questions uh, be in touch via mail thank you once again for watching this video stay tuned have a nice day bye bye